In this lesson, we'll be creating a 3D adaptive clearing operation. After completing this lesson, you'll be able to create a 3D adaptive toolpath, create an expression for toolpath parameters, and explain the use case for expressions. Let's carry on with the file from our previous example, and let's start by creating a 3D adaptive clearing operation to remove a lot of the stock that we don't need. Our focus is going to be on multi-axis positioning. However, we can't bring a tool and position it off of this face if we have stock that we need to remove first. So we're going to go to our 3D dropdown and select Adaptive Clearing. The tool we want to use is going to be in our Cloud Multi-Axis Library, and we're going to start with our half-inch flat two-flute end mill. We're going to take a look at the geometry section, and we're using the stock contours. So it already knows the size of the stock based on our setup, and it has rest machining, but we can turn that off because we haven't removed anything yet. We could dictate the tool orientation if we want it to come from a different direction, but we're not quite to that point yet, and this one will be coming from our vertical or Z position because ultimately the shape of the part matches that operation. We could do a lot of the machining for this part on a three-axis machine, but the benefit's going to come from multi-axis positioning and not having to remove it and put it in a bunch of different fixtures. In the Heights section, we want to make sure that we drop the tool down far enough so we want to go into our model and we want to show our stock component. So you'll notice the stock we're starting with is a bit lower than the bottom of our part. So we want to make sure that we bring this plane down and that the tool can come down far enough. If we go down to minus a quarter inch, then we'll cut just to the bottom of this, but we want to make sure that we extend a little bit more to ensure that we're not leaving a thin amount of material at the bottom. In our passes section, we are going to leave a small amount of stock on the sides, and we're not really worried about cutting the top. The way this stock has been done, it's already been faced down to the right level. So we don't really need to worry about the top at all. But on the bottom, we want to make sure that we go down far enough and that we don't do this in one single cut. Our tool just can't handle that. So we want to make sure that we have roughing step downs that are appropriate for our tool. So we're going to do 0.3125 for our maximum roughing step down, which automatically changes our fine step down. If we want to change the way that these two interact, we can right click and edit the expression that's used to calculate that amount. So the expression right now is math.min and then in parentheses we have tool diameter times half and then we have maximum step down times 0.1. So you'll notice that these parameters can be adjusted. For example, the tool diameter times half takes us down from a half inch tool to a quarter inch. And then we have the maximum step down amount, which is the maximum roughing step down of 0.3125, and that's multiplied by 0.1. If I change this value to, let's say, 0.125 and say OK, it's going to modify that fine step down value and leave the maximum roughing step down value alone. If this is a common thing that you do all the time, we can right click and we can make the new expression a default, or we can restore it back to the built in default or restore to a default setting. So at this point in time, I'm going to leave that value in there, but just note that expressions are not just in this fine step down box, but they can be in any of these parameter boxes, such as stock to leave and the axial stock to leave as well. If we edit these expressions, you'll notice that it's just set to a value called stock to leave, but we can modify these parameters and relate them to other things. If you're editing an expression and you right click in here, you'll notice that we don't really have anything, it's just a stock editor. However, if you start typing something that appears inside of the expression list, for example, I start to type stock, you'll notice that we have stock to leave, stock contours, stock X, Y, and Z, high and low, and these are all values that we can utilize and parameters that we can link between the different operations. Again, we're not going to get too deep down the edit expressions right now. We just want to focus on the fact that we're creating this 3D adaptive toolpath. From here, we're going to say OK, allow it to create this toolpath, and allow it to remove the bulk of the material from our part. One of the benefits to us using this 3D adaptive is it's going to start to contour the rounded sections of the four mounting positions. So if we were to simulate this, and we simply just jump to the end, you can see that it's starting to remove all that material. 
Since we are working in manufacture and the shading can be problematic, especially for these multi-axis toolpaths, I'm going to go into my effects and I'm going to turn off object shadows. So that way I'm not creating any shadows on our part because our coordinate system is not the same as the one in our part. The coordinate system for our machining is rotated about the x-axis. So from here everything looks pretty good, but we still have a little bit more cleanup work to do on the sides because we did leave material behind. But before we get into that, let's go ahead and save our file before we move on to that next step.